So on today's episode, which happens to be our first episode, I am going to show you three of my favorite game-changing cleaning tips. So Seasons Cleaning is meant to be a cleaning talk show. So you see talk shows where they are kind of based around either a cooking show or they're based around um, all I can think of is cooking, but they have a niche that they're around and bring a host that's kind of the expert in that field. Well, I am your cleaning expert, or at least I will be after we have finished working this show together because I do have a lot of solutions and answers and I'm gonna teach you everything that I know. But I'm really excited to learn with you. And I'm really excited to bring in experts. We already have a few great shows lined up where we brought in an expert for carpet cleaning. We brought in another expert who's a host and talks about all the things before and after guests arrive. And I have a few other ones that we haven't quite set up the date yet for them to come in, but we are looking forward to bringing you some answers. And each episode is kind of gonna be around a problem that we have in the home with a cleaning solution to answer at the end. And what I have found is there are some things that I am extremely good at cleaning. Like I have figured out how to clean my windows streak free, and I can't wait to teach that to you guys. But I still have a lot of questions and things that I'm like, you know, I'm not 100% cool with that system. We, we can get it better. We, we can get a better clean. So a lot of my questions that are a lot of your questions, we're going to answer those. I have a cleaning business here that I've had for about six years now. Another one bites the dust. And we're right in the trenches of training and we rebooted the business and we are doing like a new training system and teaching them how to clean and how to solve problems while cleaning. And I see where I have a lot of holes to fill in some great learning procedures. And I'm really excited to kind of do that with you. So one thing I would really like to discover on this channel together would be grout. Um, another one might be like ovens and getting inside and finding what's the easiest, safest solutions to use um, or the ones that have the best results. Kind of depends on what you're looking for. But I am really excited because not only will it help you become a little bit of a less overwhelmed with the cleaning, but also a better cleaner and answer some of those questions that you have and those frustrations that you have and also will help me become a professional with you and also help me launch the, my business so that we can be the best. We don't need to be the best in all of Omaha or all of the world, we just need the best that we can be. And that means we're striving for like perfection, as close as we can get it. Some things are destroyed and damaged and you can't ever fix them, but if we can clean everything and see everything and get everything, that is the goal. And we are a very deep cleaning business. Like, we get down and dirty. Like, really down and dirty. And we get it all. But um, I'm really excited to see how all of this kind of builds together. But more importantly, I get to answer all of the cleaning questions that I know everyone is struggling with. I know I mentioned that I've been cleaning since high school. So really, I've been cleaning for 16 years. I did the math this morning and realized I started kind of cleaning here and there in high school and um, a lot of my friends were babysitting and I was cleaning houses and I cleaned my mom and dad's house and they are realtors so I had opportunity to go clean a lot of different houses and I enjoyed it but I didn't really think much of it and it wasn't until a little bit later um, after I got out of high school started waitressing and bartending which I see how those have helped me build a service business because I learned how to take care of people. And then it kind of was like, I have a business on my hand and I always wanted to own my own business and start my own business. So I was like, you know, I kind of have a business right here. So I started Another One Bites the Dust and I believe it was 2014, 2015. Oh, I get confused. I don't, I don't think about that. I just keep going forward. But um, the business, well, it's been six years, so you do the math. That's not my specialty, cleaning is. Uh, but what we, what we have found is that um, at the beginning of starting the business, you just don't know a lot. And the best way to learn how to clean well or 
get those questions answered is really trial and error. And I have done a lot of trial and error. I love trying new products. We kind of have a, um, a rule at Another One Bites the Dust that if we can find a product that gets a better clean, that's our number one. If it helps it make our job a little bit easier, then that's a number two. And if it can um, save us money, that's always a bonus too. And so we always try to kind of keep changing with the um, new products that are coming out and trying new things so we can get more efficient cleaning for our clients. And we love what we do. So I take a lot of pride in my business and I take a lot of pride in my team and I really love my clients. So it's been really fun and I'm really excited to start this journey with you. So I have a little saying in business that I've kind of developed for myself that when it comes to business, it needs to be a win-win-win. And for me, with Another One Bites Dust, that means that our clients need to be happy and win and get that consistent, thorough cleaning. For me, that means the business has to be profitable and it has to be properly managed and it has to be a business that I'm proud of. That is really important to me. Um, and then my team needs to win. They need to be making good money, they need to be appreciated, and they needed, um, I can't remember what the other thing, we do a three, they know what it is because they know it's very important to me that we're all winning when it comes to successfully moving in a business career. Now, the reason I say that is because I'm taking that same kind of concept and bringing it here to Seasons Cleanings. So my goal is for, um, the, for, well, for the studio to win, for anyone who comes on as a host or a guest to win because they get a chance to kind of teach what they know and share things that they have learned throughout the years. Um, I would like it to be where I can win because then I can learn and I can become the expert and hopefully entertain you in the process. And then also I'm hoping that you win as um, the ones that are watching, that you're learning some cool cleaning uh, tips and that we are able to apply it and like just you know when you find a solution to cleaning something and it changes it and it's a game changer that is our goal here so speaking of game changer I actually have three of my favorite game changers and I'm gonna share those right now with you all right my number one game changer and I actually found this when I first started cleaning luckily so I it did I found it right away um, but I actually did a YouTube cleaning video. Um, no, I'm sorry, I didn't do it. It's not finished, but I researched for it and I'm still working on the stainless steel one because I'd love to pop out a stainless steel one. But I'm gonna share with you out of trying W2 and other stainless steel cleaners and all the other uh, ways that you can try because there's so many things you can use on stainless steel. But I figured out my favorite one and that is this product right here which is Wellman stainless steel. And I love it because it's actually made for stainless steel and glass, which is awesome because most of our appliances as stainless steel have like a glass face. So like on the refrigerator, there's usually a little glass plate. Um, if you're cleaning any other ones, they've like, especially now with like updating a lot of our appliances, they're turning into like appliances with like um, I can't think of the right word, but the technology that's in the appliances and they have these glass plates on them. This one cleans both at the same time. So, cause there was other ones I tried that made the shineless stainless steel look just beautiful, but then they were streaking on the other parts. So after doing a little research, years of cleaning, I recommend this. It's kind of an oil based stainless steel cleaner. And the key to cleaning stainless steel is to have a clean, dry, I usually use brand new ones if I can, uh, microfiber cloth. 
and I just got this off of Amazon in bulk because we just switched all of ours to yellow so that we're not using the wrong ones in the wrong area. So all of our stainless steel is the yellow microfiber cloth and you want to keep it as clean as possible and I actually spray onto the appliance and then wipe with the stainless steel. If it's really dirty, you might want to use a different cloth um, to kind of get everything up and then buff it out more with this beautiful, soft, clean cloth. So that's the key to stainless steel. And this is the product that has not changed in my caddy since day one. The second game-changing product, and I did share this on my YouTube channel when I first launched, which was actually about a year ago from around this time. It was in March of 2020. And that is, you know when you're cleaning your toilet bowl and you get it all clean, but there's that ring that you just can't get? Well, I have a product and it's only $2. And that is a scoring stick, which they're like two bucks and you can get them at Walmart, you can get them everywhere. I mean, you can get most products on Amazon these days, but um, this is, and you also can go to like the local cleaning mart too, which is a great place to get a lot of products but a scoring stick, and it's meant for a lot more things, but I have to have this because I don't wanna leave someone's toilet with a ring on it. Like, that's my job to get that. So this is a game changer, and like, they're like two bucks, and this is what they look like. You do wanna get them wet and make sure that you are using them on the correct surfaces. So on a toilet, you don't wanna use this. A lot of times the, the seat or the lid is a plastic. You don't wanna use it on that but the porcelain, it's perfect for. So if you've got stubborn stains in there, this is a game changer. I know I said I would tell you three, and I am about to tell you my third one, but before I did that, I wanted to give you kind of like a bonus product, if you will. If I had one product to work with to clean every surface of my house, or it's the only thing I could use, or somebody said, you can only have one product, what would it be to clean the most universal product of all? And we all probably already have it in our house. And that is Dawn dish soap. I use this for everything. Toilets, sinks, floors, tubs, windows, bathtubs. I mean, you name it, this will work on it. And it's gentle, it's safe. It works on almost every single product, including natural stones. like. This is, if I, if I don't have any product, this is the only one I had, that water and some towels, I could, I could clean your house pretty efficiently. But you know, to get to that perfection, we got some other products in the caddy. All right, and my final game changer, and this one I've discovered maybe a few years, a couple years ago, and that is when it comes to our glass, our mirrors, our windows that um, I was using a lot of different products. I tried a few, I actually went through a lot of different uh, glass cleaners, but what I found to be the best choice is it's not actually the product that you use, it is the towel that you use. So before I was using like t-shirts and you can use like newspapers, which is shocking to a lot of people, but you can. Um, and there's just like other things, but now we're finding there's a new microfiber cloth and you can see the difference in them and the feel in them. The glass ones feel silky and the um, other ones that we use are a little bit more soft. These are soft too. But this right here, this and water is all you need. These are popping up everywhere. It's almost like the glass that you, uh, cleaner that you use to clean your eyeglasses. That you, they give you those tiny little um, silk cloths to clean your eyeglasses. Same thing, but now they're making them for cleaning. And this one I got from the local cleaning mart um, on 84th and Center, and I, I love these. these. This was a game changer. I mean, I've saved money by not having to buy a nice gla glass cleaner. You can use just water. Um, yeah, they're, they're my favorite. In fact, I love them so much, I did end up making a how to clean your mirror video for our YouTube, and I'm about to show you that because it was really important. Um, it, when I know that I've got something that works, I am ready to share it with you guys. So here is that for you. I do have to warn you that it's a, the music, it was one of my first videos. So the music and the editing is just a tad bit loud. I would have probably brought that down a bit, but it's too late for that. So we're gonna go ahead and share that with you now. The key to a great, beautiful, clean mirror is not the product that you use, it's actually the towel that you use.
So you've got a mi two microfiber cloths, the difference between the, the uh, glass and the dusting or stainless steel other things is the way that they are sewn in the rack. Whereas this one, they push it out on the outside. Whereas the glass one, it is more on the inside. If you look at how it's woven, and you can feel it with your hands, the difference. So this one I kind of, it's soft and silky feeling, whereas this one's a little bit more textured, but soft as well. The cloth does matter, it is important, but there are other things that you can use as well. Um, I've used newspapers before, I've used coffee filters before, and before I moved over to these, I actually would take old t-shirts, cotton t-shirts, and there was like that good silky kind, and I would cut them up into little squares about this size, and I used those for cleaning as well. And I actually did that for years before I discovered microfiber cloths, especially the ones for the glass. I mean, this was a game changer, and all you need is water. Now, what are the options that you can use for the product for cleaning? Well, to be completely honest, water is all you need. But if you want to add a little extra to that, the one thing I like to add if I really want to like kind of clean or disinfect or add a little extra would be vinegar and you can make your own mixture. I will leave a recipe below. You can use any glass cleaner. I actually, this is exactly what I used to use about a couple years ago. All I used for my glasses uh, or my windows and mirrors was this glass cleaner here and I have so many that because I bought them in bulk and now I stopped using them that I'm trying to use them up throughout my house um, because I honestly don't like them as much as I do just using this and water sometimes using products I feel like they leave a little bit more streaks it says streak free and it is this is my favorite one out of all the ones I have found but something about just using water makes it so much more simple started I always put my gloves on to start and for today's video, we're gonna pretend that we already cleaned the top of the lights because we do not have time for that. We are focused on the mirror. So we are going to use Dawn dish soap because that is what I use if I have an extremely dirty mirror and need a little bit extra, but also you will be able to see exactly what I'm doing because of the soap spuds. To be safe, I always use the back part of my sponge, but if I need a little bit more oomph, then I will use the other side of the sponge, but you always want to test your area spot because it can scratch. Even though I buy the non-scratch, that does not always mean they won't scratch. Some surfaces are very sensitive. So depending on the size of your mirror, I always break it into sections. So this mirror is pretty big, so I decided to break it into three different sections. The reason that I do this is you don't want your water to or soap spuds to dry. If they dry, now you have to remove them and you've added an extra step. I would suggest you break the mirror down in whatever makes sense for you so you can get back to the spots and not leave them to dry. I have really long arms and I'm pretty tall, so breaking it into three works for me, but you might need to break it into a couple, especially if you need to get a step stool to reach the top of the mirror. So on a mirror, you actually wanna clean cleanest to dirtiest so that your towel or your rag or whatever does not get as dirty quickly. Because if you clean something on one side of the mirror and it gets onto your towel, you could actually go and rub it to the other places that are clean. So I do like to kind of do the clean area first and then I move along to the dirty spot. So I didn't use a microfiber towel here to clean up the dirty areas. I used just a regular towel and I really shouldn't have done that. I should have used a nice microfiber one so it wouldn't have left little towel deposits. So if you did use a cloth that has a little bit of debris left from the cloth, if you can get a glass rag, I would get that to kind of... My next step will take care of making everything look good. So once you've removed all of the dirt and grime as best as you can in that first whip around, the second step is going to be taking your glass towel and your water spray and doing it over section by section and cleaning it up. Now if you just used water, 
on both sides, you should be good if you used something because the mirror needed more help getting those spots taken off of the mirror, you might have to do three rounds of cleaning. If you're a professional, you need to make sure you're doing a great job for your clients. You always have to show up for them. There is nothing better than knowing that you did your best because that's all you can do and it feels right to make sure you give them your best. But if this is your home that you're cleaning for, by all means, whatever degree of cleanness works for you, it's totally fine. But we're gonna go with the professional side because you know, that's how I like my house. So you're just working back and forth. But I do like to keep my cloth as clean as I can. And that's why I suggest that you fold it into fours and switch it around as you're cleaning. Remove it. Here's the thing about a mirror. The cleaner the towel, the better the clean. So you want to make sure that your if your towel's too dirty, switch it. Go get another towel. By switching your towel, it makes it a lot easier for you to get the surface clean. You don't want there to be a spot on your cloth and then all of a sudden you're putting it onto the mirror. I have done this, especially when I'm cleaning makeup. Each section in the S pattern, which I talk about again in the same video I listed earlier. You know what? I'll just go ahead and list it above. It's on your right hand side there for you. To get off like hairspray or things that are a little bit out of the norm, you can use something like Dawn or actually for hairspray, if you use a little bit of shampoo, that will take a lot of that up as well. Any paint, chips or anything that's really hard and you can't get off that's hearted on there, you can get a thumb scraper or a razor. Now it's time for the mirror dance. The mirror dance is simply just moving up and down, left to right, around the mirror so you can see it from all different angles with all different lights. Sometimes it does help to actually turn your lights on or off or use just sunlight so that you can see things through a different lens. I use the water from the sink to clean the mirror. So the sink is now wet. It needs to be cleaned. So I always do the sink after the mirror. So let's go ahead and do that now. Wait, we don't have time for that. Then if you find something, you simply grab your gloss cloth and you clean it off until it's all beautiful and sparkling clean. And voila, beautiful. So I'm going to leave you, of course, with an awesome little tip to keep your mirror clean in between cleaning, right? So what I like to do is I always keep a little bottle of water, because that's what I use to clean my mirrors, but you can put whatever cleaning or glass cleaner that you would prefer. I keep it right here at the bottom of every sink, and then I buy these hooks, and I actually bought a pack of them from the Dollar Tree. And um, you can put one or two of them. Sometimes I'll put another cloth there and here. So because of that, I'm gonna put one right here. Sometimes you don't have room, so make sure you check your towel first. I already did, but then. So again, this is Seasons Cleaning, and uh, it's hosted by me, Shana Von Kay, who is now your cleaning lady. And we are here to answer all of our cleaning problems between dust and grime and soap scum to organizing to even the mindset of being overwhelmed and not even knowing where to start. We are here for you and we are going to learn together and we'll teach you what I know and bring in the experts to teach us what we don't know, but we are excited to figure out and learn. So thank you so, so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you next time. Wow, I did it. I might have to do it a couple times. Oops, I messed it up right from the beginning. To help with, I rambled again. I'm gonna try it again. So join me March 2nd at KPAO for Seasons Cleanings.